Tell us about Big Lucy and how you came to make it. So Big Lucy came from a period when I was living in Prague, and I, but I still had my studio in Los Angeles. So I would travel back to the studio to shoot and then spend the rest of the time figuring out what to do with the film that I shot. And actually what's, what is Prague related about this one is A, getting the source uh, imagery of the picture of Lucian Freud, um, but also the framing. And <laughs> on this one, so it's a transmission, rainbow transmission hologram, which means it's supposed to be lit from behind, but to make it so you could hang it on a wall, I wanted to put a mirror behind it. But since the image, uh, the hologram itself really had no information in this area, I thought, well, I don't want people looking into a mirror and seeing themselves. So I went in and scratched away the silvering. And that's what I spent my days in Prague doing, was scratching away silvering on a mirror uh, to get this. Um, but the hologram itself was done in this process that I was doing at the time of making these shadowgrams, where I would find imagery that, you know, appealed to me or spoke to me in some way. Um, in this case, it was a newspaper photograph of this picture of Lucian Freud. And there was something about the picture I just really liked. So reproduced it onto an acetate, um, which in the old days they used it for overhead projectors in schools, and basically hung that in front of the film plane as I was shooting it, and it created shadows in space and on the film as well. So you've got flat shadows and three-dimensional shadows, although they're sort of shallow. Then I would do multiple exposures, and I used a mask with like the eyes and the nose area and the lips cut out just to fill that in with color and give it some emphasis. The happy accident that occurred in this one was some movement in the film that, was, that I was shooting on stuck to the backing plate must have moved during the exposure and two of the three spots where it moved happened to be just perfectly positioned in the eyes and it really, when I saw this, you know, you, you shoot it in multiple exposures and it's a couple of hours after you shoot it before you actually see the hologram because you got to dry it and hold it up to the light and see it. So it wasn't until hours later after I shot it that I saw that there and I was like, whoa, what is that? And at first you're thinking, ugh, mistake, you know, got to shoot it again. But then started to held it out and looked at it and I'm like, now it's got a life. Now it's not, a, it's not flat in so many ways. And that's how it became a piece. It really makes it too, isn't it? A happy accident. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, all, I'd, I'd say all my best pieces are the ones that I have the least direct influence in. <laughs> Somehow, what we were talking about before, you know, when you, if you're planning a piece, you know, how do you plan it? I would never sketch these pieces out because if I knew how it was going to look, it, it, it took the uh, motivation away from making it, first of all, because mm -hmm. it was really more about discovering what something would end up looking like. Uh, my, my plans for holograms were always things to try. What if, you know, did this, did that. Um, and then there's the, the really only sort of technical thing I did in making them was the spacing between the slits, which is what created the, I call them color harmonies, because the color is variable and changes, you get all the colors, but it's where they're placed. And since you can't really place it for a specific spot, it's really where they're placed in relation to each other. And that gives you the, you know, the, the secondary colors, the color mixed colors the red, orange, yellow, green, blue of the, vibe, of the rainbow, you get automatically. It's those places where they cross over and superimpose mm -hmm. that you get those, those additional colors. That, that to me is what, when I was looking for, what is it about holography that allows me to do something I can't do in any other medium? That's, that's the part that really spoke to me, was that kind of color mixing. Um, you know, first of all, most art, we're used to subtractive color mixing, you know, like with pigments. Um, so right off the bat, just the whole idea of additive color mixing is a unique idea. But then to get these colors that you, you, you just, not only can you not really see them in nature and you can't see them in a printed medium, but you also can't hold them. Like you, you get that exact spot where you're just seeing that color you want, but you can't hold it perfectly. So it's very ephemeral in that sense. And these colors are so unusual in a hologram, the purple and the pink especially. Mm -hmm. But what, what's interesting, what was interesting to me when I was doing this area of work was 
really more about what it came to understand. It wasn't about the color specifically, but it was about color relations or dynamic color relationships. Mm -hmm. So on one level, yes, it's the color. It's that certain kind of salmon color that you see. Oh, that's really cool. But it's really more about that salmon with the green next to it and what they bring out in each other. But then it's even more than that. It's about, well, as you go through the spectrum, what, what they go from and what they become and how they change, that starts to have another impact on you. That, and you can't get that through any other medium, mm. you know? You're definitely the color wizard of holograms. <laughs> it's funny, I think of John Kaufman as the color wizard of holograms, because yeah. he, he could tune it and get stuff that he wants, or, yeah. or Mike Medora, or, or Yves Jante, I mean, or Augie Muth. I mean, they, they are technicians about getting it. I'm, I'm the hippie, I, I'm psychedelic, I just throw everything out there. It's really more, this is tie-dye yeah. compared to color. But it sounds like you had a really early experience where you were really rewarded for listening to your intuition. And so you knew that you could trust yourself with exploring stuff later. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't even trusting myself, it was trusting the world, I mean, trusting the physics, trusting chance. Mm -hmm. It was, it was actually less, it was more about distrusting myself. It was like, okay, if I have such a direct impact on it, it's not going to be, it's not going to unveil anything new. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be, not going to discover anything. Yeah. So it's really more about being rewarded for letting go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. So I should just let people who are going to see this video see all the different colors in the background. It's quite psychedelic, it's true. And I guess I can make the pitch to see the other holograms at abstract-holography.com. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Okay. clears throat> Thanks, Keith.